Greetings, audiophiles and Mass Effect fans. Welcome to my reading of of my fanfiction, After the Fall. This is a Mass Effect fanfiction, and as such, most of the characters and the universe belong to Bioware slash EA Games. No copyright infringement is intended. However, the scenario and occurrences within this fanfiction are my intellectual property, so if you decide you want to share this with someone, credit me. Please. Part 11. Trap. Shepard felt her muscles tighten briefly, but she quickly forced them to relax again. She gave Kirihi the most fractional of nods. His bruised eyelids closed again, and Shepard let her fingers slip from under the Salarian's chin. He slumped limply in his chair. Shepard turned to look Richter up and down. Her mind, eager to have a tactical situation to think on, went to work with a surge of pleasure. She hadn't seen many of Richter's men, and those she had seen were coordinated and well-armed. Why would he conceal the rest of his people? Two reasons sprang into her mind. The first was that he wanted to keep them in reserve, high and in the rear, waiting to catch her by surprise. The other reason was more likely, that he did not have the manpower or the equipment to make a good showing, so he hoped that she would assume the first possibility was true. This was a dangerous game, she thought as her dark eyes gave the room a quick scan. Featureless, no windows or doors, which meant no ready exits. So Richter, she decided to open the conversation again. The longer she could keep him talking, the more information she could gather. I've seen my man, he's alive, if barely, how do you suggest we proceed? Richter gave her a calculating look. Did he remember how tactically minded she was? His look was distrustful, but somehow hopeful. As I said, we demand representation for humans. It seems you're in charge now. I've seen the broadcasts. Did you also see the council of other races around me? She reminded him, moving to place herself back amongst her men. Vega seemed oblivious to the potential danger they were in, but she could feel how tense Caden was. Right. Richter folded his arms, raising an eyebrow at her. Any fool could see who was really pulling the strings, really calling the shots. I always knew you had humanity's best interest at heart, Lori. You got us a seat on the council, you joined Cerberus to save our colonies. Now you have every race in the galaxy eating out of the palm of your hand. Shepard knew what he was doing. He was trying to goad her, piss her off. He knew she had a temper. Unfortunately, it was working. That's bullshit, and you know it, Rick. I didn't join Cerberus. I was rebuilt by them after I died. I saved the Destiny Ascension with the Council on board from Saren. Are those acts of a xenophobe? Richter smirked. So you would do anything to save your little green-blooded buddies out there? You'd let humans die? I'm trying not to let anyone die, Shepard growled. She was losing focus. She knew she should have been scanning the room, looking for signs of the predicted trap. Instead, she was letting Richter get under her skin. I think you know that. Do I? Richter asked. You're looking great, by the way, Lori. I'd forgotten how beautiful you were. He stepped towards her, closing the space between them. What the hell does that have to do with... Even as she spoke, she knew what she'd done. F... The word didn't finish forming before the drug he'd injected into her, with a needle jabbed into the gap in her armor on her inner elbow, took effect. She was out before she hit the floor. Fuck. Agreed. Shepard forced her mind to respond. Everything was swimming before her eyes, so she closed them, concentrating on her other senses. She was seated, arms bound behind her back, legs bound to her ankles. She was sitting on the floor, she guessed, and she was leaned against someone. If only her mind could clear so she could recognize the voice. Who? Her mouth felt like someone had filled it with cotton. She wished she could reach the canteen at her belt. Major Kirihi, the person whose back she sat against, answered. Kirihi, you all right? I've been better. His voice sounded as dry as her mouth felt. What's going on, do you know? 
Shepard was starting to piece together her short-term memory, which was coming to her in fits and starts. Was I just bushwhacked? Sadly, it seems so, the Salarian said, shifting awkwardly. Crap, she sighed. So Richter got the jump on me. What about my men? The biotic took a bit to put down, Kira he explained. Caden, wasn't it? I think I worked with him on Vermeyer. You did? Shepard twisted her wrists in their bindings. What a pity it wasn't rope, but metal cuffs that held her. They took him down, though? Managed to get some drugs in him, yeah, Kira he sighed. They left you in here with me. I think because we're the best bargaining chips. I don't know what they're planning for your men. Wonderful. She scanned the room. Her vision was finally coming back into focus. They were blocked away in the smaller half room with the false wall back in place. The room was empty and dimly lit. It smelled like industrial floor cleaner. I can't believe he got the better of me like that. I know you've talked your way out of some tight situations, said Kirahi. But when people think Commander Shepard, they don't always think diplomat. They think running and gunning. They think combat prowess. Was that supposed to make me feel better? She asked ruefully. It was an attempt, yes. There was a hitch in Kirahi's voice as he spoke. Hey, what's up? Shepard asked. I'm just a little beat up, he confided. They haven't been overly cruel to me, but I took some hits in the Reaper battle and they haven't been seen to. Right. And here I came to save your ass and ended up in the same position as you, Shepard sighed, squirming her feet around in their equally restrictive bonds. So it would seem. At least I'm not tied to that chair any longer, he pointed out. Human furniture was never meant to accommodate Solarian physiology. Sorry about that, Shepard said between gritted teeth. Not your fault. Kirahi gave a chuckle which turned into a dry cough. He cleared his throat. <clears throat> uh, so, you knew these humans? I used to run with them as a kid. I didn't have a family, so I wound up on the streets, then in a gang. Your species allows their females to do that? Kira, he asked. At first, Shepard was confused. Was he saying that women couldn't survive in gangs? He'd seen her fight, so that couldn't be it. Then she recalled that in Solarian culture, females were more rare and were treated with respect. Most Solarian leadership in the highest levels was female. Kira, he sensed her hesitation. I should clarify. Do humans value their females so little that they would allow a female child to be on the streets in the first place? Had you been a Solarian, you would have been taken in and raised by others. We do not have family units as humans do. The lack of your parents would have mattered very little. Pity I wasn't raised Solarian, Shepard smiled. It would have saved me quite a few cold nights. What about the males? Well, Kirahi hesitated. There are so many more of us, you see. We tend to end up falling through the cracks at times. There are groups of males you might call gangs, which do cause some problems on our worlds. Not to mention those that join mercenaries. Shepard had a thought. Kirahi, do you know what's going on outside? That we won? They've been keeping me informed. I think my captors found it humorous to feed me information about the world while keeping me locked away until they enact their plan. They seem to think a great deal of you. Only because I'm human. It really doesn't have much to do with me. Shepard gnawed her lip as she thought. Her mind was coming fully awake now, and kicking up into overdrive. She was furious at herself for letting Richter distract her and get her temper going so easily. She tried to push those thoughts out of the way to make room for a plan of escape. I think it's more than just your being human that draws them to you. They always had pride in their voices when they talked about your exploits. You came from them. As misguided as they might be, I think they're proud of you, as a family would be. Shepard's mind suddenly lost all focus. Memories flooded in. Cold nights on Earth made warm by spending time with her friends. She didn't relish the criminal acts, as some did, but participated for the thrill of being part of something, a member of a team, even if she did not always agree with their actions. Kirahi seemed to sense that she was drifting. Shepard, we need to come up with a plan. I didn't think my chances of escape were good when I was alone, but now I've got hope. 
It took Shepard a few moments to ground herself back in the real world. Sometimes she felt like Thane, unable to forget, especially the darkest moments of her past. She could remember the joy when she tried, but the memories at the forefront of her mind were always of death. They waited like predators just under the surface for her medication to wear off, anticipating her dreams. She shook her head jerkily. Right. Plan. Any thoughts? I've had a few, but they all depend on one of us developing immense strength, he chuckled. Sadly, I won't be much good for that. I'm still a little beat up from my dance with the devil. You're what? Facing off against the Reapers. A tailor on the Citadel found me under a pile of rubble. I'm not in tip-top condition, Shepard admitted. To be honest, I was a little surprised to hear you were alive. I shouldn't have been. You always turn up alive. She could hear the smile in his voice. When you showed up on Sarkesh, I wasn't even confused. Of course you would be there. You always show up when you're needed. Thanks, Shepard said, feeling a little embarrassed. Being praised wasn't her thing. Then an idea struck her. Kirihi, can you tell if I still have my Omni-Tool? She felt Kirihi's long fingers fumble against her wrists, searching for the Omni-Tool generator clipped to her armor. He twisted, making both of them uncomfortable. Just as Shepard was beginning to worry about her shoulders, he sat back into place. You do, Kirihi said a little breathlessly. Are you thinking of your Omni-Tool blade? The way they have us bound, if you activated it, you'd chop my hands off. I'd rather you didn't do that. I'm sure you would, Shepard agreed, sticking out her tongue as she tried to creep her own fingers toward the tool with no success. If the bindings on our hands are the same as on our legs, I have an idea. They look a lot like the ones I've seen c -Sec use, electronic cuffs. When I was on Sir Cash, Morden... Her voice hitched, just saying his name. For a moment, her mind was inundated with images of him walking towards the tower, to his death. He had stopped, taken her hand briefly. She shook her head. Stay on track. Morden used an electrical surge to get his point across with an unwilling scientist. Yes, agreed Kirihi, already moving to reach her Omni-Tool again. It's an old STG trick. I can make your tool do the same if I can reach it. He pulled Shepard's arms higher and she had to clamp her teeth down on her lip to keep quiet. She knew it couldn't be comfortable for him either. She could hear little catches in his breathing as he worked. Finally, just as Shepard's eyes were beginning to water, he slumped back into position with a pained sigh. The ache in Shepard's shoulders lessened and she was able to feel the sting in her wrists where the cuffs had cut her skin. Any luck? I think so, Kirihi said breathily. For a Salarian, I am woefully poor at this sort of thing. Reprogramming an Omni-Tool behind your back with your hands cuffed. I think you're forgiven for not being the best, she said, nudging his shoulder with hers. When I activate the jolt, it'll likely short the cuffs. We'll both get a dose of electricity, Kirihi warned. Right, Shepard nodded, focusing her eyes straight ahead. She could always bear up better if she knew the pain was coming. I'm ready. Kirihi pulled her arms back into the painful position, and a moment later electricity surged through her body. Her teeth were already gnashed together, and the surge tightened her jaw muscles, so not a sound escaped her. Her hands fell free at her sides, the orange glow of her Omni-Tool reflecting off her armor. She quickly moved to use the electricity on the cuffs at her ankles, which didn't seem to have gotten enough of a jolt the first time to come apart. Before she could reach, there was a sound from outside the room, and then the false wall began lifting. Hastily, Shepard turned off her Omni-Tool, pulling her hands behind her back again. With dismay, she felt Kirihi sag against her, almost falling to the side. He'd passed out. She hoped the electricity hadn't harmed him too much. Could his heart have been weakened from his injuries or dehydration? She didn't dare check, but used her elbows to prop him back into place against her back. If he fell, it would be clear that they were no longer shackled together. The false wall opened and Richter was standing there, flanked by two armed gang members. You, Shepard breathed, hate boiling in her chest. Me, smirked Kalasan Bensina. What the fuck are you doing here? Shepard asked, her voice low and dangerous. 
Why, getting an interview, of course. Actually, I'm quite lucky. I got off the Citadel just in time. Your friends here have been very understanding and very helpful to me getting first-hand news of Earth. Of course, I always have humanity's best interests at heart. And how do you plan on helping humanity today? Shepard asked between clenched teeth. Keep calm, don't let yourself get flustered. Remember what happened last time, her mind reminded her. She took a few long breaths. Kirihi almost slipped. Well, it seems that the humans of Earth are being marginalized on their own planet, and that just will not fly, said the reporter with the smile that held as much venom as a snake's. So the Reds were kind enough to get a hold of you, a little attention grabber if you will. Of course at first they didn't seem to believe that you would come and rescue a Salarian. Seems they thought you were too clever for that. Shepard took her eyes from Kalasan and watched Richter. He seemed out of his element, shifting from foot to foot. Could it be that he wasn't the mastermind behind this after all? He put on a good show before, but had he been lying? He wouldn't meet her eyes. So you want an interview? What am I supposed to say, how much I love the humans who captured me? Shepard asked, her voice cold. Oh no, grinned Kalasan. It's very simple. We have got the most valuable hostage in the galaxy. And the galaxy is going to kick your ass for this, Shepard raised an eyebrow. Are you really that stupid? Of course not. While you slept, the coordinates we sent to your ship have self-destructed, taking a little of your computer's memory with it as well, if all goes as planned. Shepard cursed under her breath. Edie would have spotted the sabotage at once. And we have your shuttle pilot. He did give us a little bit of trouble, but we, um, won him over in the end. Steve is a non-com. He doesn't fight. Did you hurt him? Shepard demanded. Richter looked decidedly uneasy. Not bad. We just knocked him out. Did a bit of damage to your shuttle. It'll fly again. Stop talking to her, Kalasan snapped. Shepard kept her eyes on Richter. If you hurt my people, so help me. Lovely sentiment, Shepard, purred Kalasan, who had begun setting up her video drone and mic. Truly inspiring for someone who has doomed her people to have all their resources systematically stolen by aliens. The aliens you trapped here when you did whatever you did on the Citadel. Defeated the Reapers, Shepard growled, her dark eyes flicking for a moment from Richter to the loathed reporter. Well, out of the frying pan and into the fire, smirked Kalasan, tossing the video drone into the air where it hovered, lens focusing and unfocusing as it ran a quick diagnostic on itself. You don't think the Reapers strolling around on our homeworld was the fire, Shepard spat? That fire may have been immediate, but the one we're in now is slow burning and just as deadly. The reporter smoothed the front of her dress, then moved to stand before her drone. Her voice became formal and clipped. Kalisa been seen in Aljalani. Coming to you live from Earth. Humans of the Soul System, your rights are being infringed. These alien races which have been trapped here by the malfunctioning relays are exhausting our resources and our patience. What will it take humanity to get someone to pay attention? What about this? Kalisa stepped aside to reveal Shepard, who gave the camera her best glare. If our demands will not be heard, we will make ourselves heard. See how the mighty have fallen? We have your shepherd captured by this man. She gestured for Richter to step into the frame. Shepard wasn't sure if he was just nervous or if he moved closer to her on purpose. Was he giving her an out? Whatever the reason, he shuffled over to stand in front of her, but close enough to... This is going to hurt. Shepard kicked her freed hand supporting her as she swept Richter's legs out from under him. He went down like a surprise sack of flour. Shepard let out a yelp as her legs contacted with his. Even through the armor, her bones did not appreciate the jolt. They also didn't appreciate her quick motion to free her ankles. A brief surge of electricity ran through her, and luckily, Richter as well. She had time to grab him, hauling his confused form in front of her and snatching his weapon from its holster. She pointed it at his head. This interview is over. Kalisa blinked, totally taken aback by Shepard's swift movements. Richter's men looked flat out flummoxed. 
They shifted from foot to foot, not even raising their weapons. Kill the Salarian, Kalisa shouted. No, snapped Shepard. Her voice carried so much commanding force that Richter's men hesitated, weapons half ready to murder Kirihi, who had fallen to the floor without Shepard to lean against. Shepard, think about this. Let Mr. Worthy go and we may not shoot your alien friend, Kalisa curled her lip. Like hell, Shepard breathed. She responded more loudly. This is really how you want the galaxy to see you, Kalissa? Not putting on a very good face for humanity, are you? Your prisoner is already escaping. Shit, the reporter snarled, realizing that her camera was still rolling. The little drone seemed almost to be enjoying itself as it took in the scene, feeding the broadcast live for all to see. Deactivate, she ordered her drone, making the mistake of turning to speak to it. Shepard pounced, like an awkward cat. She tossed Richter aside and went for Kalisa. The right hook that Shepard dealt might have broken the woman's jaw. There was certainly a sickening crack to accompany the solid thump of fist to face. Shepard turned in the same smooth motion, shooting both guards with Richter's gun. She hoped she hadn't killed them. She hadn't had time to aim carefully. She could hear at least one of them moaning, and she continued her spin to face Richter again. She aimed his weapon at him, this time sighting carefully. Don't move. Don't call more men. This can end here. Richter seemed to consider for a moment, then slowly raised his hands. You haven't lost your touch, have you, Lori? He asked, his tone dejected. She moved around Richter, keeping his gun trained on him. She knelt and with one hand touched Kirihi's neck, searching for a pulse. She was almost certain she'd found it, when a distant explosion rocked the building. <laughs> what the hell? She looked up. Oh shit, could this day get any worse, moaned Richter. What was that? Shepard demanded, gripping the firearm in both hands, muscles tensing, and protesting the action as she shifted on the balls of her feet. I think your biotic friend may be up. I told them that the normal sedation wouldn't be enough, but they didn't want to overdose him. We are not murderers, Laurie. Could have fooled me. She motioned with her head to Kirihi's limp form. There was gunfire. All right, come with me, Shepard ushered Richter forward. The two encountered the scene that Richter seemed to have feared. At one end of the large main room, Richter's men were seeking cover and firing towards the other end. Caden had a solid biotic barrier in place, protecting James and Steve, who had acquired weapons. Shepard hoped they hadn't been forced to kill their captors, but if so, it couldn't be helped. Shepard glanced at Richter, and he gave her the slightest of nods. They might have been apart for many years, but there was still communication that could pass between them. The two split up, each carefully moving towards their own people. Steve, Shepard called as she approached Caden's barrier. The pilot turned, eyes wide with surprise. Shepard, we were just coming to rescue you. I rescued myself, she assured him. Let me in? She asked Caden, who had turned his head upon hearing her voice. You bet. He twitched an outspread finger, and his biotics allowed her to enter the barrier. Sorry it took us so long. I had to create a tiny biotic field to break my cuffs, which was difficult because I was cuffed to James here. Vega fired a few shots toward the gang at the other end of the room. You did singe me a bit, by the way. Oh, quit your bitchin', Caden chuckled as bullets deflected harmlessly off his barrier. So what's the plan, Shepard? I can hold this for a while, but we're not gaining any ground. They outnumber us by a lot. We cease fire, she said, putting her hand on Vega's shoulder. Can we? Thank God, said Steve, gratefully lowering his weapon. I don't think I hit anything except the wall. Are you sure? James asked her, still tense. Yes, but keep the barrier up, Caden. Will do, the biotic nodded. Moments later, the other side had stopped firing. Can we move in this thing? Shepard asked Caden. I can. It's draining. I can't keep it up forever. We shouldn't need to, Shepard assured him. Caden began to walk, arms outstretched, blue energy coiling around him. Shepard and company kept up as their protective bubble moved with the biotic. Soon they reached where Richter and his people were hunkered behind upturned tables and desks. Let me out? Shepard? Let me out, she repeated, watching Richter, who was crouched beside a frightened-looking younger man. Caden hesitated, then motioned with his hand. Shepard stepped through his barrier. No one shot her. That was a good first step. 
She holstered Richter's gun at her hip, eyes locking with those of her old friend. Are we ready to talk about this? He stood up. I think we are. Someone bring my friend Mr. Alenko a radio. Caden, get the Alliance negotiators in here. And I better have my fiancé's sniper rifle back soon or negotiations are off. Shepard and her team boarded the Normandy with Kirahi on a stretcher behind them. Garrus was waiting to greet them, as well as Trainer. The Turian met his mate with a gentle kiss. I see you were successful. He glanced at the injured Slarian. We were, Shepard breathed, allowing herself to lean weight against Garrus' shoulder. How'd the mission go? he asked as he helped her limp towards the lift. Pretty standard, actually, she said.